I am in so much pain that more people don't appreciate Made in Abyss. I feel like some people are like, oh yeah, I saw the first season a while ago. I never got back to it. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. You know, 9 out of 10. Those people can hold this L. It's a 10 out of 10. If you've seen the movie sequel to season one and you've seen season two, everything in your mind will change. This is the best story you've never heard of. Quite frankly, it has skyrocketed to my third favorite anime of all time. So today we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look. <laughs> Get it deeper. <laughs> I just kill. I, I, I'm going to kill myself now. That's was terrible. Into the butt crack that is made in abyss. Yeah, that's pretty. What the fuck? 2,000 years ago, an island's discovered. In the middle of it, a bottomless hole full of valuable, mysterious artifacts. Humans being the greedy, opportunistic bastards they are. Yeah, it's us, baby! Woo! Opportunistic greedy bastards! Set up shop around the seemingly endless supply of treasure, establishing a town along the edge of the ominous void, and building a society which revolves around unveiling the secrets of the abyss next to them. Everything in the town functions around the common goal of exploration. The citizens are subject to a sort of class system. Newbie adventurers are given red whistles, which only let them go down 500 meters deep into the abyss. If a red whistle goes deeper than that, search parties are sent to bring them back. But if they go below 13 100 meters, it's treated as a suicide and the searches are called off. On the opposite end of the spectrum wow. are the white whistles, legendary divers whose findings in the abyss are written Hey, it's, my, the, it's the best dad in anime. Look guys, it's best dad. Three, no questions asked and who are seen as the highest level of humanity. With a white whistle, you can go down as deep as you want and a lot of them end up going missing trying to reach the mythical bottom of the abyss. But what makes the giant hole in the ground so dangerous? Well, the hard part isn't going- Dude, I love the lore in Maiden Abyss. Made in Abyss lore is just so good. Going down, it's actually coming back up, like an old person on the stairs. As soon <laughs> what is that analogy? As soon as you drop into the abyss, trying the to get curse. back up to the surface will have serious consequences on your body, which only get worse the deeper you go. Ascending from the first layer causes mild dizziness. The second gives you nausea, headaches, and turns you into a drunk <laughs> college girl. From the fourth layer on, you start bleeding out of every hole in your body. Including your butt. This is canon. And finally, going past the sixth layer causes you to completely lose your humanity, disfiguring your body and making you go completely brain dead. Kind of like making a Twitter account. These you- True. So true. Universal symptoms are referred to as the curse of the abyss, which kills many of the divers who go down to try to make their mark on history. This isn't the only thing you've got to worry about though. To die from the curse, you actually have to make it to the hole, going back up to the surface part. Exploring the abyss is made hard by the fact that each of its layers are home to a variety Crazy of dangerous monsters. plants and animals that only seem to get smarter and more deadly the deeper you go. From a bird that eats people and mimics its prey's cries for help to learn more food to- Yo, how cursed is that? Like. Every every single arc has its own plot, right? And the plot in every single arc is so human. Like, it tackles human emotions, right? It's purely human-based plots. But also, every layer has its own flora and fauna and interesting wildlife. A bird that when it's preying on something, it mimics its cries for help to lure more people there. Dude, and that that's nothing uh, compared to what's deeper in the freaking abyss. It's like, I love how dangerous it is and the curses, but also the psychology of the different humans that are down there. To a big ass poisonous porcupine that literally predicts your fucking movements. The wildlife down in the abyss is just a giant fuck you to all the people trying to uncover its mysteries. Is this shit reminding anyone else of the ocean? Suffering more the further down you go? Crazy ass undiscovered creatures all trying to kill you man the ocean's a scary place fuck the ocean anyway all this makes incredibly incredibly brave take death an incredibly common occurrence around town so common in fact that orphanages are set up to take in all the newly abandoned kids and some of these orphanages even teach the kids how to become explorers you're showing this scene for example made in abyss is a story about traversing a verticality instead of horizontality Okay? Instead of walking straight and far, you're worried about walking up and down. So the classrooms are set up like this, where it's all about verticality, where it's ladders to get to your seats. And they never mention this. They never mention this in the show. But every single system, it... It's like, it's so thought out so well. And they literally use the same level of ingenuity in designing everything. Every man-made structure and every monster-based structure, it's all built with this frame of reference. And the characters have such interesting thoughts and it's all built off that and nothing nothing does as good of a job showing you the crazy level of attention to detail like 
Season 2 of Made in Abyss. So, Rico's a 12 year old orphan with dreams of becoming a legendary explorer. The entire reason for the anime taking place is that a letter is found in the abyss from Rico's mom, one of the famous white whistles. It tells her to come down and meet her at the bottom of the abyss. The problem with this is that Rico's mom's presumably been dead for around 10 years, but Rico doesn't care at all, so she sets off on a borderline suicide mission to reunite with the mother she hasn't seen in a decade. I'm not gonna lie. For the yeah, the deaths are incredibly brutal. There are some really, really brutal deaths. For the first couple episodes, I really couldn't stand Rico. She's a major squeaker. Every couple- See, I think Rico's a brilliant character as a protagonist because she seems like she's this cute little girl. She has like wide eyes. She wants to adventure. She wants to explore. Rico is a fucking sociopath. And it gets more and more clear the deeper you go. When she's smiling at Wazukian as he dies. And is like, oh, hey man, we'll keep searching. It's like, wow. Rico, you met all these people. Like this isn't the second season dialogue in the second season. Rico, you met all these people and they're gonna die. She says, why would it hurt me that they die? It's so much better that I got to know them and experience and see all these things. If they would have died and I wouldn't have known them, then no one would remember them. And she's like, not even 1% sad. Well, sentences, she just starts screaming and the sound of her voice made me irrationally angry for some reason. But as the show went on, she started growing on me. She's your typical- Like a tumor! Pure energetic kid character. Dude, exactly. That's exactly what I thought when I started watching too. She's your pure energetic kid character, but no, she's a fucking sociopath. Character. She also gets tossed around like a ragdoll for half the series. Luckily, she wears glasses, which by anime logic makes you intelligent. So in her abyss group Incredibly of two, she's true. the brains of the operation, calling out random facts about the wildlife that she learned from the orphanage and always keeping calm under pressure. She uses her creativity and problem solving to make up for the fact that she's built like a Q-tip and actually manages to be an important <laughs> part of her group. The other half of the duo is Reg, a robot with amnesia who's completely immune to the curse of the abyss. Can't really bleed out of your ass if you don't have one. He's the muscle- Incredibly based! The group, being pretty much indestructible, having extendable arms, which makes descending into the abyss easy, and did I mention that he has a fucking cannon built yeah, into his Yeah, baby! Greg spends his time in the series saving Rico's dumbass from certain death over and over. Whenever there's any action in the show, 90% of the time, it's gonna have something to do with Reg in some way. Yep, Speaking of much. which, most of the action in the anime is short and sweet. At its core, it's a show about exploration, and the childish ignorance of our main characters clashing with a dangerous unforgiving environment yeah, that's what it looks like the show's at its peak when it's in survival and discovery mode. Each layer of the abyss has a completely different environment, its own creatures, yeah. and a lot of ways for the duo to die. Made in Abyss is great because the world doesn't feel like it revolves around the characters like in other anime. These so actually true. feel like two kids picked up and dropped off in the wilderness. They're foreigners in the abyss, thousands of feet away from their yeah, comfort. What's really amazing about the show is the psychology of it. I went into the show expecting it to be about the exploration. And the exploration was amazing. S tier adventure exploration anime. However, and I say however with, with massive quotes, it's not about what the abyss is, it's how these humans are mentally coping with the abyss. That is what makes it incredible. It's not just the monsters, it's how they cope with the monsters. I, I still think, dude, dude, season two still has me shook. I, I, I thought of it for days after watching it. Comfort zones, struggling to survive day to day. Everything I like about the show mostly goes back to the creativity put into making it. The concept's something I've never seen, and that's incredibly refreshing considering the sheer amount of soulless, yeah. derivative, mass-produced yeah. shit that the anime industry pumps out every season. Yeah. At a certain point, it all starts blurring to together, and seeing something that paves its own path succeed is amazing. This is an anime that actually deserves a video game adaptation, unlike all the dog shit shonen and isekai games. Like imagine if some boring, vapid shit like Konosuba got a video game, I'd buy- HOW DARE YOU KONOSUBA'S AMAZING! WHY? WHY? <laughs> Just to break the disc in half and shove it up my ass. Uh, cut that part out the video. Cut it up. Made in Abyss also has a banging yeah. soundtrack, which true, true. Music's amazing. manages to convey different emotions throughout the series and gives the scenes life. It's almost Zelda quality, which in my opinion, some of the highest praise a soundtrack can get. Now, um, I would say it's way better than Zelda quality. It is some of the best soundtrack I've ever heard. Moving on to the things I don't like. Made in Abyss suffers from a heavy case of anime weirdo syndrome. This isn't a show oh. you're going to be able to watch in public. I am not. <laughs> It is true. I don't know. When I saw Rico going to that one toilet in season two, and the toilet has like tongues. 
<laughs> it's like, wait a second, this is not right. Not a fan of this anime's art style. It's kids. The anime's art style is just kids. Which makes it really fucking weird, the fact that Rico can't go more than a couple episodes without finding some reason to get undressed. And not even discreetly, the anime just goes full frontal for whatever reason. Which I mean, why? There's also yeah. a stupid recurring joke with the robot having a human dick, which combined with the art style is so <laughs> fucking unsettling. I felt like such a loser sitting there and watching this shit <laughs> during- this man out here crying. Some scenes. But those are just uh, minor critiques. No pun intended. While I might be a, uh, that was a good pun, actually. hater of the show's character design, I can also concede that it's necessary for building the whole atmosphere of two little kids exploring a world in which they're relatively powerless. They're just prey. They aren't your usual broken-ass wish fulfillment character. You know, minus the fucking arm cannon. Made in Abyss isn't a world you'd want to live in. I hate orphans. I also found the show to drag a little in the middle. But just as it started getting played out, it took a turn and the brutality ramped up 10 times, which I hope is the tone that the show keeps for season 2. Oh. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, you have nothing to fear, no bones. Oh, you have nothing to fear, no bones. To wrap things up, Made in Abyss is a show that at a first glance looks like some boring baby shit, but if you give it a chance, it takes you on an unforgettable adventure into an insane world full of high stakes, danger, and best of all, pretty well written characters. Made in Abyss is a 10 out of 10 anime, in my opinion. There's a reason why even Giga said Made in Abyss Season 2 was the best anime of last year. There was a lot of stuff that happened last year. A lot, a lot of stuff. Okay, lots of great anime came out last year. Mob Psycho 3, dude, Mob Psycho 3, Spy X Family, Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer. Last year was on fire. Made in Abyss was the best anime. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.